Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner. In this video, we're going to answer this question from DL. It says, what's the difference between compression and normalization? What is normalization? Normalization is actually very simple, but first we need to define clipping. So what is clipping? Clipping occurs when the signal crosses the maximum allowable level of the system. In a digital system, that max level is 0 dBFS, or 0 decibels full scale. I know it's weird, but in a digital system, zero is the max and all other volumes are negative numbers. When the signal crosses zero dBFS, it literally gets clipped. Like literally the waveform has its loudest peaks clipped off, resulting in sometimes a nasty sort of square wave sounding clipping sound. As a general rule, we want to avoid clipping. Back to normalization. When you normalize a piece of audio, the system performs a two-step process. First, it measures that piece of audio for the loudest peak. Second, it increases the volume of that audio until that loudest peak is at zero dB. So for example, if I had a piece of audio where the loudest peak was at negative 14 dB, if I normalize that audio, the entire thing will be turned up by 14 decibels. Nothing is clipping, but the loudest part is as loud as it can be. A few things about normalization. First, it's just a volume thing. It doesn't affect the tone of the audio at all. And secondly, don't normalize everything. That's popular advice out there, but I only normalize when the track is too quiet and I want to increase the volume without clipping. What is compression? While normalization affects volume, compression affects volume and tone. We tend to think of compression as a tool that gives us more volume, but in reality, it's a series of volume adjustments over time, hundreds and hundreds of volume changes over the life of your audio file. It takes the louder peaks and turns them down, which in turn allows you to take the overall volume of your track and turn it back up. Mix engineers typically reach for a compressor more so for the tone that the compressor imparts on the signal than its volume controlling properties. I use compressors when I want to make the track sound tight or punchy or in your face or smooth. I've got a lot of videos on compression here on my channel, so be sure to subscribe and search the channel to check those out. When to use compression versus normalization. Like I said before, I only normalize tracks that need it. For example, Part of my role as the music coordinator for my church is I'm responsible for editing and uploading the sermon audio every week. This is the file that I get from our board. Now it looks very quiet. I want to increase this volume and have it as a standardized process. Normalization plays a big role in that for me. In Studio One, Normalize is on the left-hand side in this inspector window at the bottom. I just select the audio and click Normalize and bam, we can see it added a significant amount of volume. I don't know how much and I don't care. All I know is this track is now at its loudest volume without clipping. I'm guessing this was the loudest peak right there. Um, but now I can use this and go through the rest of my processing knowing I have a nice loud piece of audio that's not going to be uploaded to SoundCloud and be too quiet for people to hear in their cars. So I use normalization occasionally, but I use compression all the time. When I set up my compressors, I like to do it in such a way that when I bypass the compressor, the volume of the audio stays roughly the same. This allows me to hear the tonal changes that I'm making to the sound versus just making it louder and quieter. As you can see, normalization and compression are similar, but quite different, and they each have their own application. Hope you loved this video. If you like stuff like this, you would love my five-step mixing guide. It's absolutely free. You can get your copy at fivestepmix.com. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.